you doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. How are you? Not too bad. Thanks very much for taking the uh, the call. I appreciate oh, that's it. All right, my pleasure. Yeah, so I appreciate the time, and um, I don't know how much I can speak about the album, but I've listened to it all the way through already, and it's uh, it's a belt. It's fantastic. So uh, congratulations on that. Really, really enjoyed it. Great. I'm glad you like it. Thanks very much. So I mean, having been in the business for like 25 years already, what is it like? Just kind of like the the uh, the last few weeks before a, a, a new release comes out because it must change with age, no? Um, it's still it's still always really exciting. Um, I mean, each we, we spend a lot of time on each album, and so you know, this one was like three, four years in the make, and then we started working on it straight after the last album, which was 2018. Um, so it's always at the end of a really long sometimes really difficult process um so yeah just getting it out there it's like you know i mean imagine if you only had a birthday once every four years it'd be a big deal wouldn't it so <laughs> it's, it's 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 like that it's like really a really big deal and i guess like the olympics is every four years isn't it so <laughs> yeah, <they're welcome. laughs> it's, maybe, exactly. it's like a creative songwriting version of that where you train for ages and ages and then it all sort of hinges on what people think at the end instead of yeah. I guess how fast I run but I mean the reason I specifically ask you about this one is not just because of because you've been in the business for so long now but also because I, I believe it's it's kind of I would imagine it's kind of your most personal album in terms of the lyrics I mean it's a weird title is like how to be a person like other people which is kind of weird it sounds like fitting in in times of COVID almost but it's got nothing to do with that no it's it's more about you that you've never really kind of felt that you fit in is that is that right and you and this is kind of yeah. your your owed to to kind of finally realizing that you managed to fit in now thanks to your wife especially yeah, How's that? Is that yeah. Right? you've been you've been stalking me haven't you you've been no no like, well yeah a little bit of of <laughs> <laughs> um well it was like it's um i'm a screenwriter now me and my me and my wife are screenwriters we've got about nine oh, right. development on tv and um uh i was reading the script for the joke uh, you know the film with joaquin phoenix and robert de niro mm -hmm. And in it, he there's a scene which is really a little bit like the King of Comedy scene, you know, the old the old seventies classic film, where he's watching the TV and he's watching uh, Murray, the the talk show host played by Robert De Niro, because um, he's going to be going on the show later on. And as a sort of an outsider, as a as a as a bit of an outcast, the Joker sort of he's watching the guests go on and he's watching them sit down and have a drink and shake hands. And he's trying to learn how to be a person like other people. And I just thought that how to be a person like other people, that's like, it really, it really struck me. Um, because yeah, I, I had quite a wild imagination when I was a kid and, and, uh, and that was good in some ways, but in other ways, I was quite a sort of frightened uh, always running away from demons and monsters in my head and um, I think I drove my mum and dad around the bend um, and that's throughout my life that's that's been a theme where like um, and it wasn't really until I got older that I was able to sort of channel my imagination to, into creating stuff um, but that's fine but I've never really as a result of that process of going from being a quite isolated child to being quite a sort of, you know, someone who's been in a band and gone around the world and stuff, I've never really intimate relationships have sort of taken a back seat. I've, I've sort right. of concentrated on the band, you know, and it's been like my life is sort of 95% of my bandwidth has been the band. Um, and then I met my wife and, um, and yeah, she she really did show me how to be a person like other people. And uh, there's actually a, a song on the album named after the title track, and it's got a really sort of goodwill out sort of vibe about it. Um, in the sense that I think a lot of our best albums are about about sort of breaking through um, and 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 seeing the world in a whole new way. That was really about that. It was sort of from PTSD is sort of joining the human race, you know. 
uh-huh. and it's it's seen the world completely differently as a as a, a, as a result of that and and all 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 these new things that I, I never knew existed uh, or never really came into my head um and now having a massive effect on me and it's really inspiring i imagine actually kind of writing the album and now being able to get it out there and share it with the world it's that's to share that kind of intimacy must be quite daunting, but at the same time, really cathartic, no? Definitely. Um, it's amazing. Like, it's it's like, a, literally, like, it's a good job they call it a release, because that's exactly what it is. It's like a release of all these sort of pent-up feelings and stuff that you've wanted to share with the world, you know? Um, I mean, it's sort of like, you know, I don't know if you've ever been to, like, somewhere like the Grand Canyon, or, you know, just see, you, when you just see some amazing if you're on your own there's like no one that to share it with and you know those things are always miles better shared and 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 that's what it feels like with the album like it feels like we've got something that we're, we're massively proud of and we, we can't wait to share it with everyone you know it's really exciting mm-hmm. can't wait to see what everyone thinks uh-huh. it must be even 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 more kind of interesting to see how how the uh, this album takes especially after kind of covid because the writing experience must have been really different and kind of just rehearsing and preparing these songs because you don't really have any kind of for, forward and backwards with the with kind of live audiences or anything like that so it must have been quite daunting kind of recording and, and kind of deciding how you wanted the, these tracks to kind of sound and feel not knowing how the audience yeah, we might had react. to do we had to do a completely different writing style for this because we weren't, it was actually written during the lockdown and right. a lot of it, and um, we weren't allowed to get together really. Um, so what happened was Richard in the main and then a couple of the songs by Mick, but also Steve and Mike would send me demos of ideas um, just done on their like little port studios or studios at home uh, of, of pieces of music. So quite similar to the way that Johnny Marr used to do with Morrissey, where he'd have like a completely finished piece of music and then Morrissey would sing over the top. Now, we'd never really done it like that before. Usually it'd be like, I would write something on an acoustic guitar or a piano or whatever, or Richard would do the same or, or whatever. This time it was like working on pieces of music and, and basically for every dozen or so pieces of music that I got, I'd get something, I'd get a melody that I thought was really good. And and that's when it sort of ignites the blue touch paper then. And you've got, oh, wow, this is really good. And then sort of after that, I'd be then like working on it to get like, that might be just a verse. So I'd be working on it to get a chorus and then a middle eight and then structure it and then work on the lyrics. And then we got together, uh, the lockdown was starting to end. So me and Rick got together in mixed studio without Mike and Steve and we just did it without bass and drums just did like four track demos of the songs and then when we thought we had enough we went into the studio and it was really quick um almost like all the all the hard work all the slog of getting ideas getting them finished was done before we went into the studio and in the past um we've always worked it out in the studio and that's good sometimes Times, but a downside to that is if you've been working on the same song for three months, it's really hard to get a vibe of take at the end of it because yeah. you've heard it so many times. Yeah. Um, whereas with this album, we were really able to catch what the band's like live because we were getting three takes in a day, which we've never done before. Even with youth, it was like one every one or two days. Yeah. Um, so to get three tracks, main backing tracks done down in a day is like, even, I mean, by our standards, that's just like incredibly fast. And mm-hmm. and the way that that's translated to the music is that it's really upbeat and urgent and 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 really sort of joyous and vibrant and, and more sort of epic, I guess, than ever before. You know, it's got that real sort of, almost a little bit like Ashes or Good Good People, you know, sort of big epic vibe about it, which is not easy to get. Yeah. Um, uh, but when you get it, it's the most amazing feeling. Everything I choose, everything I did, it brought me back to you and we are in, we are in, we are in. 
I've loved all of your albums, but for me, it's, it's kind of up there with kind of, especially kind of the first couple of albums that I really, really kind of loved. Right, great. For great. me, it's, it's, it's up there, yeah, because because the like the last the last the two previous ones that I loved them as well, but they were they were kind of a shift in tone, a shift in style, quite quite different. Yeah, and then this this kind of feels like a bit more like you know, the kind of the previous stuff. And I really really love it, and I think I, I don't know if you saw my I, t- I tweeted that it was like. Some of the vocals on here are the best you've ever done, I think, as well. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks I work, work really hard on the vocals. I've had I've had all sorts of issues with my voice, and fortunately, it's mainly my speaking voice now that sort of suffers, right. and I'm able to sort of sing around the issues that I've had. Um, yeah, but yeah, I think my voice is it is more connected now than ever before. It's like more. As I'm getting older, like the instrument is sort of maturing and like a fine wine or something, you know, like I listened to my vocals on the first couple of albums and I think my vocals on the last couple of albums are, are much, are much better. I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. Also as well, I'm like, I'm just more as an instrument, I'm just better. I'm just better, better at it because I've had all the issues with it. Yeah. I've really figured out how to use it, you know, when to use it and when not to use it and, and all that. You're not the one to change. You're the one who'll be there when the rest of it all goes away. It all goes away. It was, it was quite funny. I was, I was reading another interview. I was talking to you again. Um, it said that you hadn't really realised kind of how old you were until this album. When, and it was when you were watching... <laughs> And I think it was when you're watching The Boys. It's a series that I love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simon, yeah. Pegg, was Simon Pegg was the dad. And you were like, that's impossible. And then you <laughs> realize it's about the same age now. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're both yeah, the, same, like, the same age. I'm, so I think it's that the same yeah, thing happens to me just recently. This kind Simon of like with Cobra yeah. Kai and The Boys and things like that. I just realized, bloody hell, all this time's gone past and you don't realize. Yeah. And that's something that's happened to you right now, no? Yeah, I, I knew Simon Pegg from back in the day. I went to his wedding and um, his, his wife used to do a press um nice. and uh and radio and stuff and um and yeah and i also knew him through chris because he's a good mate of chris martins um so yeah i've been i sort of always keep an eye on him make sure he's doing all right you know like you do um and i saw him in the boys and i was like oh great he's in the boys yeah cool and it's like oh my god he's playing the dad he can't yeah. be the dad but then it's like <laughs> Yeah, he can. He's the same age as you. He's like fifty, you know, like. No, yeah, no, because in, 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 like, in the original, oh in the original comic, he was actually, he was actually, he was actually Huey in the original comic book. And then because of, because of time had gone by, by, by so fast, exactly, yeah. he ended up playing the yeah, the father, yeah. yeah so I mean, yeah, but, but when you feel, just... when you feel, when you, I mean, <laughs> having been in there for twenty five years, do you feel old when you've like playing concerts, or, did, or or do you kind of see a lot of younger people kind of appreciating your music, maybe through their parents? I mean, my son, for example, he was all last night. He was like, he was putting all Embrace songs on last night. Like, Dad, you're gonna oh, speak great. to Embrace yeah. tomorrow. He loves it. I'm just gonna well, there is there is, a, there is quite a wide variety in the audience. I mean, you know, we, we've got all the original fans, and then we've got quite a lot of new young fans, right. and then we've got the sons and daughters of the original fans. So you got some very young fans, you know. Really? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, but for me, it, it doesn't really feel any different. You know, if anything, I feel more confident and more purposeful and, and, and like, like we're, we're just, I just think we're better now than we were in the beginning. Mm. You know, I think we're a better live band. I think, you know, playing together for 25 years, you just, you, you you, you become like a well-oiled machine in a way and yes. I never really I, I've never really valued that I've never really I, I always thought you know if you were too slick it might start sounding a bit dull or whatever and I always think of like you know all those prog bands that that just have no creative friction and you just think yeah. oh god I don't want to go down that alley Fortunately, yeah. there's no fucking chance of that. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's, it's true though. It's a lot of a lot of bands kind of from from our era. They uh they don't seem to go down that alley. I mean, a lot of bands kind of that I used to listen to. And you probably listened to when you were you were younger. They kind of yeah they went into kind of soft prog rock when they got like yeah. into their late forties fifties. But that's not the case yeah. now. There's like you and then there's like Shed Sevens making a bit of a comeback now and then bands yeah. like that. And they're, they're, they're kind of they're yeah. still. They still got, still yeah, got, got to, I think you've, I think you've got to have that hunger, that urgency, and 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 something to say, you know. Um, I don't, I don't want to be one of those bands where it's just, uh, you know, 
play the, play the old stuff and then when you play the new stuff everyone goes for a piss you know and I, and I think I think we've managed to avoid that trap um, you know it seems like the fans really love the new stuff just as much or almost as much as they, as they do the stuff that got them into the band you know mm-hmm. and there's new people coming along all the time you know it's um, it's it's amazing and, and, and as for us as a band like we you know, there's five very creative, very passionate people in the band, and, and, and you know the process is anything but smooth. You know, yeah. Um, but the results speak for themselves. But in terms of playing live, that is where we can we can just relax, and it's in our bones what we do. You know, it's like when you learn how to drive, you don't have to worry about the gears anymore. They sort of take care of themselves without you thinking. And yeah. you can just concentrate on where you're going. And, and it's like that with the music. It's like, we don't really have to worry so much about the nuts and bolts because we're good at that. And we can just concentrate on lifting the atmosphere up and up and up. Yeah. And, 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 and playing live is such a, it's a wonderfully like rejuvenating thing. And, and you know, I think after COVID to know that, you know, we're going to be playing live in a few weeks is like, can't wait because we've just been locked yeah. away for so long it's, it's just i just think our souls need it you know yeah. but no i mean you said there that playing live is kind of like riding a bike or driving a car now but at the same time 25 years ago releasing music was a completely different story so yeah. kind of promoting this album now and getting it out there and, and making sure that it reaches people it must be a completely different story and you and like 50 times harder work now um it, it's it's weird because like it, it's something that Brett Anderson said where like there's like four stages to every band there's the struggle in the beginning and then there's like the meteoric rise and then there's the massive crash back down to earth and then there's like the renaissance and I really, really like that and I, th- I think that really reflects um Swage journey, you know. Um, in some ways, it reflects ours, except we've gone up and down a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, ours is more like a bit of a roller coaster. Like we mm-hmm. had the struggle, then the meteoric rise, then a crash, then another meteoric rise, then a crash, and now a sort of a renaissance. So we've sort of had, we've yeah. had two bumps, um, mm-hmm. and and sort of what that does to you is it makes you realise that it's not really about the destination; it's about the ride. And you've got to be, you've got to just you've got to just enjoy it, all of it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, whatever it, whatever whatever it d- delivers. You know, whatever happens. Um, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm massively proud of We Are It. I think it's up there with some of our best ever singles. You know, like no, Ashes yeah. or Good Good Girl or you know, um, maybe not quite as good as those two, but I think it's in the top five or ten. And uh, to be able to write stuff that still, you know, competes with our back catalogue when you're on your eighth album, I think is 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 something to be proud of, you know. Yeah. Um. And so I don't know whether it's going to be a massive success or or or, or what's going to happen, but the five of us, like, we're like soldiers, you know. We've we've gone to battle a lot now, and we're just ready for whatever it is, you know. We're just ready for whatever happens. If if it, mm-hmm. if it takes off, then fantastic. If it sinks without a trace, we'll just go back, lick our wounds, and 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 start building afresh again. And you know, the last time that happened was at the end of the third album, and we came back with Ashes, and the fourth album was our biggest ever. So yeah. uh, never write us off, you know. Yeah, but at the same time, you must kind of find yourself second, second guessing yourself a lot because, like you said, you just don't know where the journey is going to take you. And like one of your biggest albums, um, you suddenly kind of then disappeared for six years. I think it was six years, and that was one of <laughs> yeah, your biggest was, albums. Yeah. What, what, happened, what happened there? Because that was kind of you were we kind just, of on the crest of the wave then, and it just kind of yeah. We, just, I think we just like we just we didn't really connect with that album. The audience really did. Yeah. But, but as a band, it sort of felt like it felt it, it started brilliantly. We were working with youth in Spain and we spent only like a couple of weeks. We got like 30 song ideas, which was more creative than we've ever been. Um, and I absolutely love youth as a person. And it, it, he's a fantastic producer, you know, one of the best in the world as far as I'm concerned. Um, 
but the album didn't feel as soulful or as or as like we were saying what we wanted to say as much as we yeah. had done without anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there was some sense that it was like it was it was taken out before we were ready to give birth almost, you know. Right. Um, and and yeah, it was big. But when 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 an album takes off and you're not really feeling it, you start feeling a bit dissociated from it. And yeah. and so at the end of it, at the end of that campaign, we were like, we need to take a break. We need to uh, we need to we need to go back to square one and figure out, you know, what it is, why we're doing this, because we're not doing this to be a big band. We're right. doing this because we want to be a great band. Yeah. Um, and that's really firmly been the focus since that fifth album, really. So album six, seven and eight, uh, you know, any commercial considerations, we've been like, forget that. It's just got to be yeah. the best that we can make. And if people love it, then that's great. But that can't be why we write it. There's a lot of people, when you do well, there's a lot of people who are invested in you continuing to do well. And mm. so... A little bit of your focus comes off your art and onto the commerce. You know, yeah. whether that's because you have to be done by a certain time because of tours booked or, you know, decisions you make about videos and, you know, all these, all these kinds of things. And some of the decisions uh, are out of your hands as well. Because, yeah. you know, when, when, you, when you sign to a major record label, major record label has spent the money and so it owns the rights. So literally you don't have the rights anymore. Mm. Um, whereas now we're in control of everything. And so everything that we do is completely organic and completely from the band, which is a lot more fun. It feels a lot more grounded. And I think the results are, you know, in the music is speaking for its health. You know, I think I think honouring that source where the songs come from means that the good stuff carries on coming out, you know? Yeah, and if you do it on the source, it dries up. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously self-releasing the album, uh, your own album, and, and kind of Rich is producing it now. Um, that obviously, it's like you said, it just lets you release the, the releases the way that you want to but l- yeah. later on in the day would you kind of consider also producing and releasing other bands through well, your yeah own that's um that's something that richard and mick and mike are all really interested in they're all yeah. they're the they're the ones in the band who are good at that stuff i'm not um i, I don't know i don't know what to do with a fader or a button i'm like <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm a very, I'm a, I'm a luddite when it comes to technology, um, but yeah, Rick and Mick and Mike are all really good at that. So yeah, um, and Rick Rick's already done like people like the music and Star Sailor. I think he's got Star Sailor in this week actually. All right. Um, so yeah, he's 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 a fantastic producer, and we've worked with the best in the world, you know, like Youth and Johnny Dollar and people like that, and and you just like. Um, like uh, uh, what's the word? Like uh, I, I don't. Whatever that creature is that nicks a little bit from all the different people, and there's like a magpie maybe. Yeah, no, no, yeah, where, where like, yeah. Just like you know, learns and steals a bit from from each one. And so Richard is like, you know, the X man that 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 can do any of the powers. If he touches you, he nicks you up. Power. Yeah. He's, he's a bit like that. He absorbs it all, and so uh, almost all those great producers from the past are sort of still in the studio in spirit. Definitely someone like Youth. I, his his uh, like little catchphrases and um, and words of wisdom. We're always saying to each other in the studio. You, you ought to get a royalty on this album, really, for the amount that we reference him. You know. <laughs> Listen, I mean, the the site that I I, I run is also is heavily focused on film and, and TV as well. I had right. no idea that you were you were into screenwriting, which is yeah, yeah, really interesting. Got... How, how did you get involved in that? And what kind of things are you uh, are you kind of up to at the moment? Um, so I started about eight or nine years ago, um, and there's sort of in in it's TV mainly that I write for. Right. So in TV, there's sort of two. Paths. You can either 
um, go down the alley of doing like continuing drama and cut your teeth like that. So some <clears throat> fantastic writers have done that. People like Sally Wainwright who did that on Coronation Street, I think, and um, you know numerous others. Or there's another route where it's just all about your ideas, and and that's much more of a lottery. It's like you know, getting getting a big TV network to take a chance on a brand new writer with a brand new idea yes. is really difficult. It's very rare. It does happen, but it's yes. very rare. And so what happens is you have stuff in development with big production companies. And then once, once it gets to uh, fruition, you take it out to the channels. And we've had stuff in development with Netflix and TNT. Right. Um, and the production companies that we work with, we work with Eleven, who do sex education, um, working with Key Street, who's the woman behind things like Happy Valley and It's a Skin and stuff. Um, working with Seesaw, who do uh, did that film Year of the Dog and do right. a lot of Jane Campion stuff. Um, and so we're working well with all these incredible people we're loving what we're doing you know we're we're, we're uh, you know and we, we make a decent living out of it as well even though none of the things that we've made we've done yet have actually been made for the screen yet yeah we've got to the stages of having directors attached and actors attached and stuff so we've, we've almost got there and it's just it's like it's probably going to happen in the next year or so yeah. if it's going to happen you've got all the um, networking yeah it's yeah. really it's been, yeah uh-huh. Really? We've at the got, same, at the got, same um, time, sorry. We've no, got like just... nine things in development at the moment, so. Right. Uh-huh. But I mean, being involved in all of that, is there, is there any kind of plans for you to, I mean, I imagine that might help you to get some of your, your music that you've already written in series, because that's something that usually happens now. I mean, look at Stranger Things and all these kind of things, they pick up songs and stuff. But have you also, have, have you also considered maybe kind of scoring stuff, scoring films or TV shows and things like that? Um, again, that's um, maybe something more for Mick. Mick is more the right. guy who's the great, who's good at all the things and stuff. Um, it's uh, yeah, my my area. What I like is writing. So I like writing songs. I like writing scripts. I like writing stories. I'm working on a book now as well. Okay. Um, so anything anything in that area is what is is what I'm most prone to. Uh-huh. Really, yeah, so you've got quite a few uh, different things going on at the moment. Yeah, brilliant. So, I mean, just to finish off then, I wanted to talk a little about the live circuit. You said that, obviously, you've got the Bingley Festival coming soon, and then you've got a, a I think it's a 10-day UK tour to, to promote the uh, the album. Yeah. What what can that be expected? The other day, I know I don't know which one of you tweeted on, on the Embrace Twitter account that you kind of wanted to say, see which uh, golden oldies, if you if I could call them yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, they wanted to hear. Kind of, like... One of them was, the, like I think, it was the first song that you actually wrote was one of the biggest yeah, really, most requested I, no yeah. um yeah, yeah. which which ones were the most requested and which songs uh, if there are any are that you are that you prefer not to play because i remember radiohead went through a phrase where they just stopped playing creep because it yeah. was just that it was that song and they just stopped is there anything like that that you stopped playing or, or maybe that you kind of you like you just now's the time to come back and start playing it again um yeah, I mean, we are as a band at the moment really arguing about that. Normally, um, I get to decide what the set list is. Uh, right. There's only been one gig where I haven't decided the set list, um, and and we tried it, and it was really it wasn't a great gig. <laughs> <laughs> so um, play that so well for you. Yeah. Of, up until up until now, they've gone okay. Fair enough. Let Danny decide, but. Um, <laughs> Sort of more recently in the last few weeks, there's so many great songs now, um, including like we want to play a lot of the new album, but um, from the past that we haven't played for a while, that the band all really want to play. So there's quite a lot of heated discussion about you know what we're going to do. It's like you know Mick will be like, if we're not playing Retread, then I you know that's it. You know, and, and Mike will be like putting his sticks down unless we play exploding machines and you know, so there's there's all this so so that's what prompted me to put that out on Twitter and on Facebook is like, are there any songs that you want to hear? Just to yeah. see if any really rose to the surface. Um 
but yeah, I think I think this, this uh, it, we're gonna play like all big ones, you know, like Good Good People and Ashes and Gravity and Goodwill Out and all that. But we want to play, you know, at least half a dozen of the new album. So then that probably yeah. leaves us like another half a dozen or so where we can go off piste a little bit and play, you know, like Fireworks or Retread or Look As You Are or, you know, all those songs that maybe we'd normally play um, that people really want to hear. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and when you do revisit those those old songs, do you think you'll play them kind of more or less as they were originally? Or would you oh, yeah. Of- yeah, bring, bring them out. Yeah, I'm in not, a, in I'm not into. I, I always hate it when bands do that. You go see a band yeah. and you've got like a funky version or whatever. It's like, <laughs> no, you, <laughs> yeah. you want to hear it like how you it was. And yeah. yeah. Um, so we're just. I mean, we're just playing better. I mean, when when we play the songs from the Goodwill Out now, this out so much better live than they do on record. Um, so I think I think I think that's the big difference. Is like they rock more. There's more, you know. They're they're just better now. Uh-huh. And I'm um, obviously going. If you've not been able to play live lately, but um, what, what question I like to ask all of our guests is um, new up and coming bands that they've discovered that they think need a lot more of a light shining on them that haven't really been heard of lately. Yeah. Is there, is there anyone well, that you've well, discovered maybe in COVID on Spotify or wherever? Or, or, or um, well, this is a little bit of nepotism here, but my brother's daughter, Ella, E L L U R, she's just starting to get spot players on Radio One and stuff. Yeah, because she, she plays with, with him as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's an incredible talent. Um, you know, there's this song called Burn It All Down. There's another one called Moments. Her latest single's called Close to You. Um, she's just me and our Rick are like you know we I mean we're proper rock stars we've been doing this for 25 years we've been around the world over and over but whenever we're in a room with Ella like Ella is the star in the room she's the centre of the yeah. Yeah. and I just think that she's got it you know she's just real um, yeah. and, her, and, her, and her lyrics are sort of have that stamp and uh Northern working class kitchen sink, authentic, um, you know, and she writes all her own stuff, and she's just she's just brilliant. So I recommend everybody to check her out. Mm-hmm. You won't be and, I, and as a love for music, kind of was that just out? Did that kind of bloom out of herself, or was that just because she's kind of yeah? Seen I mean, yeah, she you. she's she, she yeah she's at my wedding ten years ago, and she was like ten or whatever, you know. Um, right. She's, she's, yeah, and I think even earlier than that, like, mother, like, even when she was like three or four, she was like in the studio singing. Um, yeah, she's just got it in her bones. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know where she gets it from. <laughs> <laughs> really, well, listen, I don't want to keep you any longer. Um, sadly, Rick's not made it, but it's no problem, Daniel. It's been really good to speak to you. I yeah, wish I'm, you the best. I'm the one you want to talk to anyway. He, he never makes any bloody sense. Yeah, you're the, one, you're the one who we were. We get the so they set list out every time. So <laughs> no, listen, it's, it's been really good to speak to you. I wish you the best of luck with the album. I, if it was up to me, it would go to number one straight away. It's a fantastic album. I love it so much. So I wish you Thank the best you of luck. Much. And I uh, hope to speak hope to speak to you or see you at a uh, gig sometime soon or maybe even speak to you about a TV show sometime soon. Right, yeah, great. All right, All right. mate. I'll speak to you soon. All right. Take care, all the best of luck. Take care. Bye. Cheers, man. We are